We've eaten over 1,000 meals on cruise ships, and today we're counting down the top five specialty restaurants that we have eaten, and the one that we would never go back to. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan. And I'm Jared. And this is JJ, JJ Cruz. Cruz. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today. Before we get into talking all about food, I hope you're hungry. If you could do us a favor and hit the subscribe button, we are on our journey to 30,000 subscribers. And you can be a part of it. It's completely free to you, it means the world to us. And hit that like button while you're at it. Now, we have eaten a lot of food on cruise ships. And we know the common question is, what do you recommend for dining, especially dining on cruise ships? And we wanna answer that question for you today with our top five. That's right, top five specialty dining restaurants and the one specialty dining restaurant on cruise ships that we would never go back to. We're counting down these restaurants to get to our favorite restaurant at sea and then of course share the one that we did not care for. So you're gonna wanna watch all the way until the end. Kicking it off, we are talking about Cagney's Steakhouse. Now Cagney's Steakhouse is the steakhouse for Norwegian Cruise Line, but we actually ate Cagney's on the Norwegian Bliss. This restaurant really surprised us. Honestly, I'm a steak snob if you don't know that already. I grew up in Nebraska, my grandparents are ranchers, so I absolutely love steak and am somewhat of a steak snob because of it. Steaks on cruise ships often disappoint Jared. Often, that is very true. <laughs> That is what made us so excited when we had such a great meal at Cagney's on NCL Bliss. Now, the food was fantastic from beginning to the end, and the steak was delicious, cooked to perfection, and the side dishes, oh my gosh, that mac and cheese. The mac and cheese, <laughs> the mashed potatoes. It was really one of the first steakhouses at sea that we feel like we ate at, and the meal was a true American classic steakhouse meal. This is one that we would go back to again, and we highly recommend recommend Cagney Steakhouse. Moving into number four, we are going to Disney Cruise Line for Paolo. Now, Paolo, we were on Disney Dream when we went to Paolo, and it is an Italian restaurant serving brunch for our stay, but it does do dinner as well. We absolutely loved our entire experience from beginning to end, the beginning, the charcuterie, and uh -huh. let me tell you, there are two antipasti selections. You can do the actual seafood, which is to die for with king crab <laughs> all the amazing seafood selections to more of a traditional charcuterie with meats and cheeses and that was totally my jam they poured the oil and the balsamic right over the plate the meats were fresh the cheeses were delicious we really really loved the starters but then we got into the main courses and i have to say that i think palo has my favorite lasagna at sea. The lasagna at Palo was delicioso. <laughs> I have to admit, it was delicious, and we finished it off with some tiramitsu, which was also to die for. One thing that I loved about Palo is their plating. Um, the food just looked incredible from the time that they brought it out, from the starters all the way to the, the desserts. You can really tell that there is an art form in the food when you go into the Palo restaurant on the Disney cruise ships. Now for number three, we're moving over to Asia, and not just one particular country, we're talking multiple places in Asia. Gigi's on the Carnival Horizon is one of our favorite restaurants. On a six night sailing last summer, we loved it so much that we didn't just eat there once. We ate there twice and we love the variety of food that they have. To start off the meal, we had what was called chicken rolls, but they were pretty much egg rolls that were absolutely delicious, super long, really crispy, and the crisp doesn't stop there. <laughs> Moving on into the duck, there was this crispy Ugh. duck skin that was to die for. We absolutely loved it. I'm literally salivating right now talking about it. That was just to begin. We then tried the Kung Pao chicken and the Hakka style noodles and the fried rice. I would say the dishes just kept coming and for the price, which was only $15 per person at the time, we felt like we ate our money's worth at this <laughs> restaurant and everything that we tasted was amazing. You though in particular loved the dessert. Oh, the dessert was so great. It was a crepe with a citrus ice cream. And for me, someone who loves that little bit non-traditional style dessert with a little bit uniqueness to it. I absolutely loved it. Now you know 
It's the best. When you were sitting next to the president of Carnival Cruise Line herself, Christine Duffy, she was there the same time as us, <laughs> had an incredible meal just like us, and we definitely made a little small talk with her as well. One last thing to note about Gigi's, this is gonna be the most budget-friendly restaurant on this list. With it only being $15, you definitely get your money's worth here. Some of the other restaurants on this list are all the way up to $65 per person. So it's a great value, especially for the overall dining experience that is provided. Moving to number two, it's one of our favorites on Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. That is 150 Central Park. And on board Harmony of the Seas, although we've been on multiple ships with <laughs> this same restaurant and we have eaten there many a times on all the ships, this restaurant is one of those gourmet eateries, fine dining restaurants, and you can get foods from a little bit all over the world. Uh, one of our favorites here for the beginning, for a starter, is the soups. Uh. The soups are amazing. The pumpkin soup at 150 Central Park is something that I dream about when I'm not eating it. It is one of my favorite foods in the world. Now they bring the soup to the table deconstructed. They put the ingredients in the bowl and then pour the broth over. And let me tell you, it is one of the most rich and succulent soups I have ever had in my life especially now that we're coming up into the fall season. It is something that I crave every single day, <laughs> but it doesn't just stop there. We forgot to mention the drink. Oh my goodness. Right when we get into 150 <laughs> Central Park, we know what we're drinking. It is a table side made to order cucumber martini. Ugh. And this martini is so fresh. It livens up the palate. It really is a great starter drink. And honestly, a drink for the entire meal because we get it throughout the entire meal. It is delicious, but more than anything, it is something that we point out because rarely do you have a specialty cocktail that really stands out alongside the amazing menu that is there at 150 Central Park. Now, if you follow our Instagram, you're going to know that something that I eat a lot of is short rib. I love short rib. I get a lot of it on cruises, but 150 Central Park does have my all time favorite short rib at sea. It is so tender and juicy and flavorful. I love this short rib so much. It comes with some potatoes and other vegetables. This is really a true farm to table experience. Um, that's kind of how I would look at this, uh, yeah. this dining experience, but elevated. It is an experience that is like Jared said, more gourmet, more fine dining. If you enjoy that fine dining experience, 150 Central Park is going to be for you. Before we get into our top pick here, our number one pick, we do have a few honorable mentions here that we have to note. They really should be on the list, but there just wasn't room in the top five. First is that of Portside Barbecue. This is on Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas and only on Oasis of the Seas. <laughs> the only reason we didn't put it in our top five, literally the only reason, is because it's such a casual eat. It's not really a sit down restaurant, but it's especially because you have to pay extra for it. So we didn't really feel like it fit the top five mold. That's why it's an honorable mention, but it is some of the best barbecue restaurant eats anywhere in the ocean. One other honorable mention that we do just want to bring in here is the Lawn Club Grill on Celebrity Reflection. Now this restaurant definitely rivals Cagney for the best steak at sea. We had a phenomenal meal here on Reflection last March. It does come with a little bit of a price, but if you're a meat eater, if you are a carnivore like us, it is like going to a cookout in your best friend's backyard and getting some of the most delicious grilled meats right off of the charcoal grill. It is Celebrity Cruise's best grilled meats selection at sea by far. So if you have anything from burgers to steaks, whatever kind of grilled meat it is, go to the Long Club Grill on Celebrity Cruises, Celebrity Reflection, where we went. Speaking of Celebrity Cruises, Celebrity Cruises takes the top spot here for number one. And just a reminder, the one that we will never go to is coming up after this. <laughs> but for number one is Murano. And on board Celebrity Reflection, again, such great eats on Celebrity Reflection. Celebrity Cruises brings some of the best cuisine, fine dining cuisine at sea with Murano. At our meal there, we started off by eating an heirloom tomato salad that sounds so simple, but it was truly so fresh. It tasted like they picked the tomatoes right out of the garden. The cheese tasted fresh on the salad, but then we moved into a crispy pork belly. The pork belly was amazing. Again, 
We are carnivores, so we always are looking for the meat eats, and the pork belly at Murano was so good. But the shining star of the meal, I have to say, was probably what you got. Uh, the lobster tail your way. They had multiple ways, but I did the Thermidor style. And let me just tell you, it is the most savory... <laughs> And just mouth-watering, amazing sauce mixed with lobster. And it's all made fresh right in front of the table. The best part of all of this is this is true fine dining. White glove service. They present every single course at the same time in front of you. One of those things you see on those, you know, high-end luxury <laughs> yachts. <laughs> That is what you're getting here at Murano, and it is just truly an experience, perfect for a birthday or any kind of celebration at sea, but also great just in case you really want to go to eat. Now the lobster wasn't the only thing that they made table side, they also made us a crepe. Oh. I, I, I'm like lose. I'm at a loss for words because the crepe was so good. And every time they were bringing the cart over to bring to make something else table side, you knew that it was going to be good. The cool thing here is your waiter is also sometimes your chef because the waiter is the one that's making it. This crepe had ice cream inside. The crepe was cooked perfectly. It had strawberries and sauce and it was delectable. I would say that we would go back to Murano in a heartbeat and every time we could, if we could afford it, it does come with a high price tag. But like Jared said, if you have something to celebrate like a birthday or an anniversary, it is a great restaurant to try out while on a celebrity cruise ship. It is definitely worth the value. You have to go. It is our number one best specialty dining at sea. So for no other reason, go check it out on behalf of us at JJ Cruise and let us know what you think <laughs> in the comments below by any of these selections, including our last one. So we've obviously talked about the best specialty dining at sea on cruise ships. Now we want to talk about the one specialty dining experience that we never want to have again and plan to never go back to. Now this restaurant was on the Norwegian Bliss. So the Bliss did make the list in the on the good side, but unfortunately it is making it here in the bad and that is Los Lobos. Ugh. We had a meal there that was one of the worst meals we've actually had on a cruise ship. Now, this is Norwegian's take on Mexican food, and maybe it was just a bad night. We've only eaten there once, but I will say we did not finish any of the food that came out. The food came out sometimes cold, it didn't taste fresh, and overall, the flavors just were not there. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's the big thing. I felt like I was eating absolutely nothing. The flavor was not there, and as someone who is Latino myself, it was really a miss to have some constant Latin flavors be missing in every single dish. I think we even had the salsa that we didn't even know was salsa because we were <laughs> like, this does not taste like anything. It was unfortunate, definitely not worth the money, and we left before the end. It's probably not fair to call this Mexican food. It was probably supposed to be more Tex-Mex, but still. Okay, you can't offend Texas and their Tex-Mex <laughs> with this food either. I don't care, Mexican, Tex-Mex, it is not food that is worth anything, and I'm so sorry to say it, we will not be coming back to Los Lobos anytime soon. Well, that is the list. Like Jared said, please let us know in the comments, which of these have you dined at? What do you like? Do you agree with us? Do you strongly disagree? And if there's a restaurant that is not in the list that you love, let us know in the comments below where you think we should dine next. Yes, or where is one place we should never dine? <laughs> <laughs> Either one, your favorite or your least favorite, comment down below. We want to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And until next time, see ya! See ya.